while we've been waiting for 3i Atlas to make its closest approach to Earth on December 19th. Something remarkable has been happening millions of miles away. Spacecraft at Mars captured the comet while it was completely hidden from us, right behind the Sun, and ESA's juice probe on its way to Jupiter. Just photographed this interstellar visitor at its most active moment right after it swung around the Sun. The images are finally here. And they're showing us things we've never seen before from an interstellar comet. Before we dive into the spacecraft observations, I'd love to know where are you watching from right now? Let me know in the comments. I genuinely enjoy hearing from viewers all around the world. Now, let's explore what happened when multiple spacecraft across the solar system turned their instruments toward this rare visitor. On October 3rd, 2025, 3i Atlas passed within 30 million kilometers of Mars. That's about 19 million miles. For context, that's roughly the same distance as Earth to Venus when they're closest to each other. Close enough for spacecraft at Mars to get a much better look than any telescope on Earth could manage at that moment. Two European Space Agency orbiters at Mars were ready. ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter and Mars Express. Both turned their cameras toward the comet. This wasn't easy. These cameras were designed to photograph the bright Martian surface from just a few hundred kilometers away. Now, they were trying to capture an incredibly faint object 30 million kilometers distant. Dr. Nick Thomas, who leads the Cassis camera team on ExoMars TGO, explained the challenge clearly. The comet was somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000 times fainter than what these instruments normally photograph, but they succeeded. ExoMars TGO captured a series of images using its color and stereo surface imaging system. The camera used five-second exposures, stacking multiple frames to pull the faint comet out of the background noise. And there it was, fuzzy white dot, moving slowly across a field of stars. That dot is the comet's coma the cloud of gas and dust surrounding its nucleus. The nucleus itself, maybe a kilometer wide, was too small to distinguish. Dr. Thomas compared it to trying to see a mobile phone sitting on the moon from Earth. Impossible at that distance. But the coma was clearly visible, stretching several thousand kilometers across. The ExoMars images showed the comet's coma glowing, as expected. But what scientists really wanted was spectroscopic data information about the chemistry. Both Mars orbiters attempted to gather spectra. Mars Express used two instruments, Omega and Spicum, while ExoMars TGO relied on its Nomad spectrometer. The teams are still analyzing that data. It's not yet clear whether the comet was bright enough for a full chemical characterization. But even attempting these observations was valuable. Here's why this matters. When 3i Atlas passed closest to the Sun on October 29th, it was on the opposite side from Earth. We couldn't see it, the Sun's glare blocked everything. But Mars was in a different position. The spacecraft there could watch the comet during a critical phase that Earth-based telescopes completely missed. NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter also observed the comet, though those images haven't been fully released yet due to the recent government shutdown. That orbiter has an extremely high-resolution camera called HERIZE with a 50-centimeter mirror. Scientists are eager to see what it captured. Something else came out of the Mars observations, something unexpected and scientifically important. ESA announced that data from ExoMars. Sticho improved the predicted trajectory of 3i Atlas by a factor of 1010 times more accurate than before. This was the first time astrometric measurements from a spacecraft orbiting another planet were officially submitted to the Minor. Planet Center Database, the International Clearinghouse for Asteroid and Comet Observations. Why is this significant? Usually, trajectory predictions rely on telescopes on Earth, or occasionally from spacecraft near Earth, like Hubble. But using data from Mars orbit required accounting for the spacecraft's precise, position around another planet moving through space. It's a complex calculation. The flight dynamics team, science teams, and instrument teams at ESA had to work together, solving problems they don't normally face. This has direct applications for planetary defense, 
Not that 3i Atlas is a threat. It's not. It's going to pass Earth safely at a distance of 270 million kilometers. But the techniques developed here, using spacecraft at different locations in the solar system to track fast-moving objects, could be invaluable if we ever need to track an asteroid that actually poses a risk. Then came November and this is where things got really interesting. ESA's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, was traveling through the inner solar system on its way to Jupiter. The spacecraft won't arrive at the gas giant until 2031, but on November 4, 2025, it passed within 66 million kilometers of 3I Atlas. That's about 41 million miles. Further than the Mars orbiters were in October, but the timing was perfect. JUICE observed the comet just days after it passed perihelion, its closest point to the Sun. This is when comets are at their most active solar heating is at its peak. Gases are streaming off the nucleus and the coma is brightest. Between November 2nd and November 25th, JUICE used five scientific instruments to study the comet. Janus, the optical camera. Magus, the near-infrared imager. UVs, the ultraviolet spectrograph, SWI, the submillimeter wave instrument, and PEP, a particle sensor. The JUICE team couldn't wait for the full data set. They downloaded a quick preview just a quarter of a single image from the navigation camera, and what they saw surprised them. The comet was clearly visible, surrounded by obvious signs of activity. The coma was bright, and faint hints of two tails extended from the nucleus. Dr. Ladislav Rezak, from the Max Planck Institute, who leads the SWI instrument team, said they never expected an opportunity like this. The fact that JUICE and 3I Atlas crossed paths was, in his words, an extraordinary stroke of luck. Here's the frustrating part. We have to wait. The full science data from JUICE's instruments won't reach Earth until February 18th and 20th. Wait. 2026, more than two months away. Why the delay? JUICE is currently traveling through the inner solar system relatively close to the sun. The spacecraft is using its large high-gain antenna as a heat shield, protecting sensitive equipment from solar radiation. That means it can only transmit data using a smaller, medium-gain antenna and that antenna sends information at a much slower rate. So the data is sitting on JUICE right now observations of the comet's coma, spectroscopic measurements of its gases, ultraviolet images, particle measurements from the solar wind interacting with the comet waiting to be transmitted. The scientists involved are understandably eager. The SWI instrument, developed at the Max Planck Institute, is particularly interested in water sublimating from the comet. It detects radiation at wavelengths that reveal water molecules specifically. And because JUICE observed so soon after perihelion, when activity was peaking, those measurements should be exceptional. What we're witnessing here is something that's never been done before with an interstellar object. A coordinated observation campaign involving spacecraft at multiple locations. Mars orbit in October. JUICE near the comet's orbit in November. Earth-based telescopes before and after. X-ray satellites in late November and early December. Each platform sees the comet from a different angle, at a different distance, with different instruments. The Mars orbiters caught it approaching the Sun. JUICE saw it at peak activity. Earth telescopes are now watching it cool down as it moves away. This multi-point observation strategy gives scientists something they rarely get with comets, a complete picture of how the object changes throughout its passage. And with an interstellar comet, that's especially valuable. We only get one chance. 3i Atlas will never return. It's on a one-way trip out of the solar system. By spring 2026, it will cross Jupiter's orbit. Eventually, it will leave the Sun's gravitational influence entirely and head back into interstellar space. These spacecraft observations especially from JUICE and the Mars. Orbiters capture data during phases we could never have seen from Earth even before the full JUICE data set arrives. We're learning important lessons. First, interstellar comets behave like comets. 
3i Atlas has a nucleus, a coma, and tails. It responds to solar heating. It releases gases. The fundamental physics is the same as comets from our solar system, but the chemistry appears different. The ratios of molecules are unusual. The carbon dioxide abundance is extremely high. The presence of certain compounds suggests formation conditions we don't see in our neighborhood. Second, international collaboration works. ESA's Mars orbiters, NASA's Mars spacecraft, JUICE on its Jupiter mission, ground telescopes from multiple countries, X-ray satellites all, contributing pieces of the puzzle. Third, adaptive mission planning is powerful. None of these spacecraft were designed to study interstellar comets. But mission teams adapted quickly, repointed instruments, developed new observation strategies, and made it work. The ExoMars team figured out how to photograph something 10,000 times fainter than their normal targets. The JUICE team adjusted their flight plan to maximize observation time despite thermal constraints. That flexibility will be crucial for future interstellar visitors, because they will come. With surveys like the Vera Rubin Observatory coming online, we'll detect more of these objects, maybe several per year. So here's where we are. Multiple spacecraft across the solar system captured. 3i Atlas, during critical phases that Earth couldn't see, the Mars orbiters photographed it approaching perihelion. JUICE observed it at peak activity just days after closest approach to the Sun. The preliminary images are remarkable clear detection of the coma, hints of tails, signs of intense outgassing. The full scientific data set from JUICE arrives in February 2026. That will include detailed spectroscopy, particle measurements, and high-resolution imaging across multiple wavelengths. Meanwhile, 3i Atlas continues to ward Earth. December 19th is two days away. That's when it makes its closest approach a safe distance of 270 million kilometers. If you found this update valuable, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What aspect of these spacecraft observations interests you most, the Mars close approach? The juice timing, or the fact that we're tracking an interstellar visitor with a fleet of spacecraft? And again, let me know where you're watching from. Thanks for being here. More updates are coming soon.